Well, thanks very much. And uh, the results came out this morning. And, and what we can see is that there's definitely a, a more difficult operating environment. And that's sort of come about after a fairly uh, sort of a, a boom period in construction. Can you talk a bit about how that, that operating environment has looked in the last year, as well as going forward into 2011? Yeah, I think the major, one of the key differences is you're seeing a fall off in public uh, sector spend in South Africa. And uh, you just have more players competing for less projects. And with that comes fiercer competition, tighter margins. Um, and you're seeing that sentiment being reflected. Uh, it's quite pervasive. Uh, we do have a, a company called McConnell Dow in Australia which is quite prolific in that market and the Pacific Rim. And their infrastructure spend is a bit more robust than here. So we do have that as a counterbalance. But in South Africa, uh, we are seeing a slowdown. Uh, the good news is that our two-year order book is stable at 31 billion rand. Um, and I think the next 12 to 18 months are going to be quite challenging. And you're going to see that both in terms of margins and competitive pressures and also, have you seen many uh, job reductions in your business? I think the, the main issue has been the slowness in coming to market of projects. Um, and that, that is really the big factor currently. Uh, my view is that it will return. Um, South Africa needs infrastructure for economic growth, for uh, job creation. And so it's not a matter of if it will happen. I think all of the uh, economic models are showing that notwithstanding the um, investment of the last three, uh, four years, we're still lagging in terms of where we need to be as a country. So uh, I think it will come back. Our challenge is not to take on too much uh, low margin, big projects in this environment, because we'd like to be positioned uh, for growth when, when the market turns. But have you had to reduce your headcount during this period? We, we have. I think, uh, firstly, it is quite normal with big contracts to employ people for that particular project. Ideally, when one job ends, you want to redeploy those people to another big job, and that hasn't happened. So um, we have seen uh, job losses at the end of big contracts. And there's, but as you say, there's pent-up demand for infrastructure mm -hmm. assets, both in uh, South Africa, Southern Africa, and Africa. And uh, what do you think it's going to take to unlock the 800 billion plus uh, public infrastructure spend that government speaks about so often? Look, I think that um, the South African government, uh, as most governments around the world, have been mired in the global economic situation. Um, two days ago, President Obama announced a $50 billion infrastructure package to kickstart that economy. I think uh, that once again shows that infrastructure is a key lever in economic uh, recovery. And I think as South Africa works its own way through the global economic situation and, and the balance sheet issues of SA Inc., we will see this being resolved. And the, the pent-up demand is particularly acute in the power sector. It's a sector mm. that you play in, you are participating in. But you've done some iconic World Cup projects. The next iconic projects, in my view, would probably be the renewable energy projects. Are you positioning yourself for renewables? We are. We are. We're doing uh, research on wind and solar. Um, and we want to be in a position to bid for renewable energy projects when they come to market uh, later this year, early next year, on wind and uh, solar. And particular solar technologies, or are you agnostic? Uh, we're looking at wind and solar. Okay. And are you looking at uh, applying your balance sheet at all to any of those projects? Well, I think uh, one area that is increasingly talked about is the whole area of PPPs. You know, my view, especially in an area with constrained, in an environment of constrained public resources, leveraging private sector balance sheets is an important uh, measure to uh, expedite delivery. And uh, yes, where there are PPPs that make sense, uh, we will apply you know, our balance sheet capacity in that regard. But you are apply also pursuing a share buyback program. Yes. Does that not limit your capacity for PPPs? Well, we, we have uh, well over 3 billion rand available. Uh, we've we've uh, earmarked 1 billion rand for our share buyback program. And also we're maintaining our dividends. So 
you know, it is a, a redistribution of substantial resources to our shareholders, but we have kept our powder dry for growth um, and PPPs. We also have in our industry the need to provide bonding capacity for big projects. So we, we feel comfortable that um, we can do uh, implement our share buyback program and uh, be positioned for growth as well. And in particular, PPP environments, which ones are you particularly excited about? Well, I th look, I think it it's, uh, runs the full spectrum of infrastructure. Um, there was a discussion on prisons, hospitals, power. Uh, we are positioned across the infrastructure value chain and where projects arise that make commercial sense, we'll pursue them. And another possible area of PPP is to deal with a bit of a crisis that's emerging in South Africa, and that's the area of asset mine drainage. Do you have potential solutions there, and how do you think so the country, as a, from a national crisis perspective, could address this in partnership? Look, the, it's, it's quite a topical issue. Um, in the Avenge Group, uh, via our business EPC and Key Plan, uh, our engineers have patented a process called the HIPRO process, which is a high precipitation reverse osmosis uh, process. Um, we, our reclamation rates are 98%, our recovery rates. Uh, the global benchmark is about 85%. We, we believe we are globally competitive when it comes to the application of membranes and technology, well, membrane technology in acid mine drainage. We have tended up till now to focus on providing solutions to the private sector. Uh, we have applied our technology in Namibia at the Arongo desalination plant for Arriva, where a portion of that uh, water will go into the municipal water grid to provide potable water for uh, the local community. We also have a water treatment facility for optimum coal and at Emilaslini for BHP uh, and um, Anglo. So, you know, we are developing a track record in this area of acid mine drainage, and we believe that we are positioned to be part of the solution. And we look forward to engaging with all stakeholders, in, particularly, uh, in particular government, to, to deal with this pressing issue. But at Avenge, we are geared, it's an area we want to grow into. Um, our desalination plant is the largest in Southern Africa. Our acid mine drainage uh, work is, is proving, uh, it's proven and it's working. So as that becomes um, uh, implemented, we'll be ready. But government in its approach has emphasized the affordability of it, it seems all other parameters. Mm -hmm. Is the solution that you could offer affordable given the current constraints? I think it is affordable. Um, you know, in affordability, when, when, when one looks at affordability in the context of environmental degradation, I think you have to take a holistic view on what is the cost of dealing with a rising water table and acid mine drainage issues, and what is the cost of not dealing with them. And I think uh, we are in a position to help to solve both a commercial problem and an environmental problem uh, with proven technology and state-of-the-art um, um, applications. And the, the, whole other, the other mantra that we hear coming out of other construction companies that have also come through their reporting periods is there's a, a, a renewed attention being given to Africa given the growth, given the return of the resources boom in some ways. Do you feel that's going to be a major focus of this group in the next few years? Yes, look, uh, currently we are quite um, active on the African continent through our open cast mining operation. We're in Guinea, we're in Ghana, we're in Mali. Uh, we do projects in Zambia. Um, so we have been working with our blue chip clients across the African continent. I think on, on construction per se and, and uh, other major infrastructure projects, we are looking at them. There is an immense backlog on the continent. And um, if we are to follow the adage of fishing where the fish are, we are looking at that and uh, we'll take a view. And then I can't uh, let you go with asking you ask, asking about nuclear because yeah. you are part of one of the consortiums. That, but do you believe nuclear will be part of the integrated resource plan 2010? If it is, do you think they'll restart the bidding process from scratch, or do you think that the two tenders will be asked to reapply their minds to nuclear one? I think in the energy mix going forward, and in light of especially 
uh, debates around greenhouse gases and clean energy, uh, it's highly unlikely that nuclear will be excluded from an integrated resources plan. So I'm expecting to see it there. Um, you raised the issue of affordability earlier. I think the South African government will be looking at uh, what is the most cost competitive bid and uh, whether they'll reopen it entirely or go to the two bidders remains to be seen. But I think that um, nuclear will be on the agenda and uh, affordability for, for the taxpayer is going to be a big driving issue. But I can't see another um, solution without nuclear in the mix. And finally, finally, why opting for a share buyback rather than any other capital distribution mechanism? Well, we thought that share buybacks would be would add most value uh, for our shareholders. Uh, we've um, put it at uh, a billion rand, uh, and that allows us to deploy capital to our shareholders in an accretive manner, and still keep our powder dry for other growth initiatives that we have in mind. Thanks very much.